Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano and on today's program we will learn about a rally that's planned in Quincy Center tomorrow to speak out against anti-Asian racism and violence. First though, we do check news for you. The Quincy City Council this week did unanimously approve a request from Mayor Thomas Koch to borrow $120 million to build a new police station. Ward 1 Councilor Dave McCarthy, who is chair of the Finance Committee, said the new facility will serve the city well for many years to come. It's going to be another jewel. And uh, all that work down there, um, along with Father Bills, Council Balmucci made, you know, great points. Don't forget them. Don't forget the, the dog shelter. Uh, those are all great points. And, you know, Broad Street is an eyesore and it's all going to get fixed. So I think Quincy, uh, you know, it's, it's good for Quincy. It's always good for Quincy to put something quality up. And um, great job by Joe Shea and the administration digging into this. Um, it's $120 million or less, and hopefully it's less. We all hope it's less. But things happen in regards to the, the market and the way things go. So cross your fingers. Maybe we'll get a break. Now, the public safety headquarters will also be home to the fire department administration and emergency management offices. The city council previously approved $32.5 million to acquire the properties needed for the new facility. Mayor Koch says he hopes the new complex can be completed by the fall of 2023. A Quincy man has been indicted on charges that he tried to kill his pregnant girlfriend while holding her hostage in a Quincy Point apartment earlier this year. Prosecutors say Matthew McAuliffe dragged the woman into the home and tried to strangle her back in February. Neighbors called police and officers found the woman unresponsive after they forced their way into the apartment. She was hospitalized for treatment. McAuliffe now faces charges, including attempted murder, and is being held without bail pending his arraignment in Norfolk Superior Court on April 20th. A Woburn man has been charged with stealing a car in Quincy this week and driving it to a local supermarket where he allegedly stole some merchandise. 44-year-old Nut Lee is charged with stealing a vehicle parked on Safford Street in Wollaston early Tuesday morning and driving to the Stop and Shop on Newport Avenue and then stealing about $350 worth of goods there. Police used video from home surveillance cameras to track Lee to the store parking lot. That's where he was arrested. Officers say they recovered multiple items that may have been stolen from other vehicles in the area. Norfolk County Sheriff Pat McDermott provided an update to the Quincy City Council this week. McDermott said that his main priority right now is to make sure that all inmates at the Norfolk County House of Corrections in Dedham are vaccinated against COVID-19. We're averaging about 370 inmates uh, since I took over on a daily basis. Currently, we have half of, a little over half of our inmates have been vaccinated, which is great. Uh, and about 80% uh, of the staff has, has taken the vaccination um, uh, for, uh, for COVID. Uh, we've done uh, a great uh, opportunity to reopen our uh, inmate education programs. We brought back our staff as of March 1st uh, with the religious services programming, and uh, hopefully we're going to see uh, a continued opening of that as the weeks and months to come, as more and more people get uh uh, get vaccinated and, and more people can come back into the facility. McDermott also reported that his office is assisting with providing COVID-19 vaccinations to residents of Quincy Housing Authority buildings. Well, when Quincy Youth Hockey's Squirt A team competes for the South Shore Conference Championship tomorrow, they'll be playing to support the father of a team member, Bernie Anderson. Bernie's father was diagnosed with glioblastoma brain cancer last Father's Day. He was given only 12 to 18 months to live. His son is a defenseman, and the team will be showing gray ribbons on their helmets with the letters BBS for Big Bernie Strong during tomorrow's game against Weymouth at the Bridgewater Ice Arena just before noontime. 
Coming up, we will chat with Albert Lee of Quincy for transformative change about a rally in Quincy Center tomorrow. That's next. The COVID vaccine is a critical tool to protect yourself and in the pandemic. But you might have questions about its safety. The same safety measures used for all vaccines were used for the COVID vaccine. Tens of thousands participated in vaccine trials to prove it's safe. Since then, millions of people of all races and ethnicities have gotten the vaccine and experienced only mild side effects. I got the vaccine to protect myself, my family, and my patients. When it's your turn, trust the facts. Get the vax. Times have changed. Hey, hi. Good morning, hi. everyone. But people in recovery from addiction still need support. I am well. Um, doing good today. Many are finding it online. It's another resource. During COVID-19, staying connected is critical for recovery. It works for others. People are ready to be there for you. And it could work for you. See you next time. Learn more about online recovery support. Didn't it come from you guys? Strangers cough at me. Move away from me. Someone spit towards my direction. All the stereotypes that we've worked so hard to break are just going to be reversed. And I won't let that happen. We all have to play our part. I donate my plasma. I've been making masks. We deserve respect as much as everybody else. I'm a firefighter, not a virus. I'm a mask maker, not a virus. I'm a nurse. I'm a delivery woman. Chef. A neighbor. Artist. Bus driver. I'm a doctor. Fight the virus. Fight the virus. Really happy to welcome to the uh, program today, Albert Lee from Quincy for Transformative Change. We'll chat a little bit, first of all, about that group and uh, also about a rally coming up Saturday right in Quincy Center to uh, combat uh, anti-Asian racism, violence, and hate. So, Albert, uh, welcome. Thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you, Joe. I'm um, glad to be here, and um, I'm glad to um, that we are um, now highlighting the um, kind of need for for people in our community to speak up and, um, and giving them a, a chance to kind of share their stories. If you could, before we talk about um, the event tomorrow, could you tell me a little bit about Quincy for Transformative Change? Yeah, um, so Quincy for Transformative Change or QFTC um, is a uh, kind of a citizen community group uh, formed um, last summer um, out of the, um, after the um, protests, after the death of George Floyd actually, um, so, um, so uh, there, there were a few folks in the, in the community uh, organizations that um, um, decided to put together a rally um, to kind of highlight the, you know, the, the kind of um, the, the violence that was affecting people of color um, across the country. Um, and, uh, and, and uh, a lot of people came together for that, as you probably know. Um, and um, one one part of that um, was uh, we realized that there was kind of a need for a space um, in Quincy uh, for people uh, who um, were like interested in, in kind of changing the, the social fabric um, and like um, and changing the community, you know, bringing up community conversations about um, kind of uh, these issues that um, that they haven't had a space to talk about in. Um, so, so that was sort of the, the genesis of that. Um, and we, so we, um, we organized, so we um, collected uh, kind of um, got in contact with, with folks who had attended and the, the rally um, and um, kind of um, came together in this space. Um, we created um, a mailing list, a Facebook group, um, and, um, and also just um, started um, kind of working with um, other um, groups as well on um, kind of organizing. So, yeah, that's interesting. To, there are other groups with kind of similar goals, I guess, or concerns. Um, at least, are you part of those? Are you aware of those? 
Yeah, so um, so uh, the there was another group kind of uh, came out of um, the Eastern Nazarene College um, that uh, is called Quincy for Justice, and um, they 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 um, basically formed around the same time we did, and they held a rally, and we reached out to them, um, and so we um, now part of um, part of their kind of um, leadership is on our organizing team as well. Um, and we're also working with uh, March Forward Quincy, uh, which was formed a few years ago. Um, and they've and they've been doing a lot of um, um, good work around uh, just kind of discussing different issues affecting the community as well. Um, they've been working with the, the Thomas Crane Public Library as well on uh, on having uh, book readings and, and sessions about on different topics. So. How about how many uh, folks, Albert, would you say are involved first in QFTC and then kind of general in this movement, if you would, in the city? So, um, so that's a, actually a good question. So, um, so we have um, in the, in terms of the um, people doing kind of organizing work, um, I would say a, a couple of dozen. Um, and then uh, there's a larger set of, of people who are allies who, who have um, helped us or come out to our events. Um, and um, that's, that's in probably the, uh, I would say eight, 900, maybe a thousand people um, because there, there are 700 some people in the Facebook group. There's um, like 200 some um, on the mailing list. Um, and then there's, yeah, there's also just a lot of other um, people involved uh, in the community as well. So, and would you say that they're um, all ages, all races? Um, uh, yeah, people that have been here for a long time. Newcomers to the city, and what's what's kind of the, the makeup? Yeah, it's that? it's kind of an interesting like cross section of of the city. Um, obviously, like um, like uh, I'm one of the younger folks, and also am um, a little bit nearer to Quincy. Um, but we also have um, like even in our organizing team we have um we have someone who has been actually doing uh, organizing work on the south shore for um, longer than i've been alive we have um we have uh, a few other younger folks my around my age um and and like for for example the, the person who helped uh, put, put together our posters is is a high school student who's like 16 um we have uh oh oh another group um that i uh, I want to highlight is the um, is uh, North Quincy High in Solidarity, uh, which is a, a group put together by the, um, the high school students there, um, and they they've they've been very uh, vocal and 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 uh, and in driving kind of changes um, both within the school system as well as uh, as you've probably seen like the the mascot change um, that finally happened was was uh, on on a large part through their efforts. Um, and that's like basically, yeah, students realizing that they can uh, kind of speak up about these issues and uh, and really being passionate about it. So, so we also have like a lot of young folks, um, but we also have um, people who are doing organizing stuff who, who have been like fighting uh, on on different issues um, for for decades. Um, and I um, I think that it's a it's just just a big like spectrum across like different demographics. Um, we have a lot of um, like older folks who are, um, you know, like maybe like folks who are parents or retired and, and they want to see like kind of um, the, um, now that like people are speaking up more, they want to see kind of the changes that they were fighting for back, um, you know, decades ago um, to happen. And um, also, yeah, and just have a better future for, for their, you know, their children and their grandchildren. Um, and yeah, but, but I see a lot, a lot of energy also coming yeah, from, younger folks so yeah it's interesting uh, you, you may or may not be aware that years ago that the city did have its own human rights commission um actually it has you know since kind of um, gone into dormancy um, if you will and i guess this uh is the this is the filling the need you know that that once did um years ago and it, it i guess it says to me that the, there is still a need do you feel the same way so, um, so actually, yeah, that's interesting you bring that up. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm where we used to have a human rights commission. We also used to have um, an officer on civil rights, I believe, um, through the 90s. Um, and, and these were, yeah, these were official city commissions um, that operated for, for many years. Um, and now like the, that, that there, there hasn't been an equivalent um, for probably at least a decade and a half. Um, um, but last, um, 
last fall, the Quinty City Council um, uh, proposed an ordinance to create a, a new department for the city called the Department of Social Justice and Equity. And that would look at kind of across all the departments of the city, um, kind of how they were doing in terms of um, um, how they, their relationship with the communities and, you know, and, and how they, um, and, and basically like actually going into um, each community and, and kind of seeing what, what issues um, they, were, they were facing uh, as well in kind of a holistic way. Um, so that, that's like something that, that um, has since like kind of started up again. Um, I know, yeah, so that's, that's something we've, we've been very, um, we've been very enthusiastic about um, hearing. Um, uh, unfortunately, like the, the mayor was not as supportive of the pro proposal, even though, um, you know, it passed with basically through city council. Um, and, and this is probably the, the first time there's been an ordinance by city council that the mayor has not um, gone forward with. Right. As you may be aware, he has agreed to form a, uh, a committee, if you will, a commission to, to study um, the possibility of, of that committee, or at least of making some type of structural changes. Is that kind of a partial victory, would you say? Yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's a step in the right direction, but um, it's also kind of um, has, has kind of its own set of issues because we're looking at a, a temporary commission of volunteers as opposed to a, a, a city appointed a city um a, a paid like uh office um and and then um, and the like kind of the um uh kind of the whether or not the um the um the uh, the need is is uh, for a permanent position uh is is part of the i guess the mandate for for this commission um and and I, I feel like it's it's not a lot of time given like the time frame to to get that all that data um, and and really that's that's a big part of what we wanted kind of out of the um, creation of the department is to be able to um, kind of really understand what's happening in the city at at, the, at a very um, high level and and within each community as well. Yeah. Do you know have any members of QFTC or, um, you know, March Forward Quincy or any of the other groups been asked to serve on that mayoral commission? Um, so, uh, so actually the, the mayoral commission, um, we, uh, I, I was part of a delegation that met with mayor um, uh, about two weeks ago. And we, um, we found out that the um, kind of the, uh, the commission members had already been chosen and uh, not, none of us in kind of the, um, the, um, Within the groups that have been doing like um, community work in the community, um, were uh, informed of this. So, um, so yeah. So uh, I I I I do know a little bit about the composition of of the uh, committee, and I'm hopeful. But it, I um, I don't. Yeah. I, right now, it's kind of a mystery of, of kind of uh, what what that's actually going to look like. Um, Let's talk a little bit about uh, the event that's been put together uh, for tomorrow uh, that has risen, of course, specifically out of um, high profile incidents of violence against Asian Americans, but uh, really uh, more generally, probably since the pandemic started. So, yeah, the it's it's kind of been, of course, we see the, the numbers like we the one one thing about like this violence is you can't obviously not every incident you can attribute right to to racism or or any intent around it. But what we can see on a larger scale is that like we've seen you know the 150 percent increase in in these sort of incidents um, since the beginning of the pandemic um, and and even um, and it's it's and and it's not like 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 part of it obviously is the um, kind of the um, rhetoric around COVID that has happened uh, in terms of, um, you know, calling, calling it the China virus or, or um, basically put, pinning the blame on, on either um, China itself or the Asian community at large and kind of, kind of um, that, that sort of stigmatism uh, uh, has kind of, um, yeah, pervaded uh, a lot of people's interactions with the, uh, with the Asian community. We've seen like, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, like um, like a visitor trip to like Boston Chinatown, like dropped precipitously, right? Um, and, and a lot of shops went out of business and people, a lot of people are struggling there. And we kind of saw a bit of the same thing in Quincy 
as well. Um, and and there are a lot of people that have are struggling as a result. And and um, but but like the the what what's I guess like different about now um, now in terms of like we this has happened. This is not the first time something like this has happened. Um, and and you know and this is something that um, uh, that like we've like my parents' generation uh, had to deal with uh, different issues, but in this kind of similar way as well. Um, and what's, what, what um, I think is different now is that um, a lot of um, people are feeling more empowered to uh, kind of speak out about their own experiences, um, especially like younger folks who, who are kind of, um, have, have kind of the um, foundation for um, talking about um, these issues because they they've they've seen the the, the groundwork laid by um, other um, activists, other people um, kind of speaking out um, about issues in their own communities, um, and and, um, and 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 this is that this part is not completely new either. There's been you know solidarity movements um, in the past, even around like the civil rights era, and even in, with um, with uh, the stuff that happened in like the '90s and uh, like. Uh, um, there, there have been solidarity movements um, you know, between, even between like Asian communities uh, and other communities of color, um, black communities. Um, and, um, but, but now there's, there's much more, um, I guess, um, high level, like the, the conversation is, is at the level where, where people are, are able to kind of get um, kind of on, this, on, on the same foundation of understanding. Um, and um, yeah, so, so yeah, it's, it's really encouraging that um, people are, Speaking up more, um, I think I think one one um, reason that um, it's taken this long is like like if you look at the history of, of the Asian community in America, like we've been you know like there 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 was you know kind of explicitly racist policies up until even the nineteen ninety uh, like like the nineteen hundreds. Uh, you know the Chinese Exclusion Act, and of, of course, like what happened like during World War II with the with the um, basically concentration camps, um, and and a lot of that that like kind of baggage has kind of affected how our communities right um, are able to kind of feel safe expressing themselves. Like we, um, a lot of folk, like folks in like um, my parents' generation, my grandparents' generation, would be. Um, you know, felt that it was safer to not, like, not be that squeaky wheel, not not stand out. Um, it 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 um and and that's and that's that was a way, like, that was a way to guarantee like safe, you know, safety and not not be targeted um, the way uh, some folks uh, might be targeted for speaking out, uh, especially back then. Um, and and people are recognizing kind of that that is not really sustainable, that, that, that really just uh, kind of um, brings us to the, you know, kind of, that's what led up to the, the current situation. And, and, um, and we really need to kind of, um, yeah, be, be able to talk about ourselves and our own identities and, and share that freely. Um, but, but even, even now, like, I, I know, like, some of my friends are kind of uh, afraid to, you know, be seen speaking out in public because they think they might be personally targeted. Um, I mean, some of my friends have experienced violence personally as well. Um, and um, some folks who uh, wanted to contribute um, their stories at the, the rally on Saturday, um, you know, they, they, they asked to, um, to share their stories anonymously instead of, um, instead of speaking in person because they, um, yeah, they don't want kind of, um, to, to be targeted, they're afraid of that happening. And um, that's that's something that's, yeah, um, kind of really, really I hear a lot in the um, kind of conversations with the community right now. Hmm. If you can, um, let's kind of run down the event and while you're doing that, I'll show folks um, a flyer that's been put together. This is a collaborative effort uh, between uh, several different groups, right? Right, so Quarry um, is the Quinty Asian Resources uh, and, and is one of the main uh, neighborhood uh, organizations for uh, for the Asian community here. Um, they've been doing a lot of uh, great like work around like uh, kind of food security, uh, all sorts of resources for for um, folks, especially like in the immigrant community here. Um, and um, so they're hosting um, a rally called Fight Anti Asian Hate at 11 a.m. Um, and 
and they're working with uh, a couple of community partners uh, in the city um, to do that. And um, there'll, there'll be a presence by, by um, members of the city government as well. Um, and then at 12.30, um, our um, kind of arts and culture task force uh, will be hosting a, uh, a, an event, an art event for kind of um, that's friendly, uh, family friendly. Um, and we'll be uh, have uh, arts and crafts and uh, uh, coloring uh, postcards, doing, uh, doing chalk art, making signs um, and, um, and just like, yeah, just activities for, for um, people with, with families there. Um, and uh, at one, uh, we are hosting the uh, Stand Up Speak Out um, Pan Asian Solidarity Rally. And that will uh, kind of highlight um, the voices of um, our community members in the Asian American communities here. Um, and there will be a kind of a lineup of different uh, people kind of speaking to their personal experiences, um, as well as um, uh, some people who submitted statements in advance and those statements will be read as well. Um, and we also invite um, allies um, to kind of speak in support of um, the community as well. This is something uh, that I'm sure you're, you're hoping everybody will come to, but uh, during the time of COVID, what are some of the safety protocols, Albert, that'll be in place? Right, so yeah, so we, we um, have been very strict at previous events about um, maintaining um, proper distancing and everyone has to wear a mask, that's, that's not a, <laughs> that's not optional um and um and we're going to make sure yeah of course that like like that people um are, are able to stay safe while they are um in the in the space um hopefully there, there will be enough um, room you know in the in the square um for everyone um but we we we, we are asking everyone who attends um to to wear a mask and, and respect distancing and um and there'll there'll be um some supplies like hand sanitizer and extra masks available as well if people need it. What do you hope will come out of this? So I hope um I hope the um kind of we we do have people um uh, who are more comfortable talking about um again their experiences and um maybe um now our um kind of leaders are, are more willing to listen um than in the past that that um that people will feel comfortable kind of speaking out uh, when they encounter problems um because it, it is like these things um aren't new um uh, a lot of things just have kind of not um, kind of been brought to attention especially by you know by by our um um, people in power just because like um, people don't feel comfortable speaking out they don't feel like their their problems are important enough to to talk about um, and they and they're they're worried about a negative response um, so I think um, um, we once like uh, I hope like we can kind of build um, a stronger kind of community in Quincy around um, kind of addressing kind of the issues that are kind of unique to all of our communities um, and that have been um, kind of happening for for generations, um, and 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 Quincy is 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 like kind of um, still you know still ever kind of in in a process of of change, um, and of course like um, and but but like the power like the um, kind of power structures um, that are in the city right now don't always reflect um, what, what the city looks like, like today. Um, it, if, you, if you look at, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so really like hoping that, that people will feel more empowered to um, both like participate in, even in like, um, in, in, in speaking out and participating in their own like, government, um, participating, uh, you know, in, in, in different civic duties here. Um, and, and just like building a, a strong community and, and um, yeah, making, letting, making a place where, where everyone can feel um, safe. Do you yourself feel safe in Quincy, Albert? I have, uh, I guess like, I feel like I'm not necessarily visible enough that, that, um, um, that um, I, I'm too worried, but like, I, I know friends who have experienced um, violence themselves. I have, I have not experienced violence toward me personally. I've um, only experienced, you know, like verbal abuse or, or things like that. But that's, that's, 
um, that's definitely not the case for, for everyone. Um, so I, I, I feel like I, um, yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm wary, but, um, but I, I'm hopeful that, yeah, we, um, we will kind of have, I mean, I, I think our community is, um, uh, can come together and like, um, help everyone else feel safe as well. Yeah. Anything else uh, you'd like to add right now? Um, I think, uh, I guess uh, I would like to kind of just, uh, yeah, um, um, sure that like we do um, kind of hope that, um, you know, that there will be um, longer st structural change in the city and um, that now that um, like pe people are like uh, finally giving, kind of giving a voice to these concerns and, and it's like, it's, um, I guess it's also kind of interesting to see maybe the, um, the difference in tone, the contrast of the, the city's response to um, the, the protests um, last year for in the movement for Black Lives um, and um, the city's uh, response to kind of, um, you know, our, our Asian community members um, kind of lifting their voices now. Um, and and um, yeah, and and I think that that does reflect kind of on the relationship to the city that we have um, between the, like that like Quincy does have a black community. We're you know six percent black, but um, but um, but the the you know thirty one percent Asian uh, community that has has much larger kind of impact on um, well like uh, the the city as a whole because just the, um, because of um, kind of the the nature of all the um, the business relationships and and uh, elsewhere and 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 we are probably still you know one of the faster growing communities in, in the city. Um, uh, oh, and um, one more thing, I guess uh, Quincy's Asian communities aren't you know a, a monoculture either. They're, we're you know actually pretty diverse um, in terms of both um, in terms of uh, just our back backgrounds as well as just um, our um, um, in terms of like our you know, financial situation and, and so on because like we, we have um, not only of course um, Chinese immigrants or, or, um, or American born um, Chinese um, um, we also have um, you know a Vietnamese um, population. We have um, Filipino population. We have um, and if, if you think about like um, our, our Asian uh, kind of um, communities, uh, we also have you know East uh, uh, South Asian communities. We have uh, you know people from um, from the Indian community. We have. Um, like, um, people from all over and and they all have kind of different experiences shaped by of course like how um you know like the history of those communities in, in the city as well um and i think like we it, it um it, it really uh is imperative on on us as a community to kind of um highlight kind of these different experiences um and and like and kind of make make let people um have have the visibility that they need to kind of talk about um, the, the issues that are specific to their communities. If folks would like to learn more about uh, Quincy for transformative change, uh, how would they do that? So um, the easiest way to uh, kind of find out more about us um, is to uh, go to uh, qftc.org. Um, right now that will send you to the, the Facebook page where you can uh, kind of sign up to get announcements. You can also join the Facebook group there. Um, we will have a website up soon as well that, um, that will be at the same address, qftc.org. Um, and we also have an Instagram uh, account at uh, QuincyFTC. That's QuincyFTC. Okay. Appreciate your time, Albert, and um, I hope you have a, a successful event tomorrow.
Special thanks to Albert Lee for joining us today. Thank you to our crew. Thank you for watching. On Monday at 1130, we'll chat with Cindy Sign of the newly formed Quincy Tree Alliance. And a reminder for you, too, don't forget to visit our website at QATV.org. You'll find all of our latest programs, news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and much more. For all of us here at Quincy Access Television, I'm Joe Catalano. Please stay safe. Thank you.